Hello everybody, welcome back to the show. I hope you all had a good weekend. I hope you all got excited for the new releases and I hope everyone that's ordered this stuff from Wave 1 has got it and enjoyed it. I want to give a big thank you to everybody who's listening out to uh, my videos. It means a lot that somebody's listening. Um, before I get started, please leave uh, a like, a comment, Please subscribe to the channel. I'm not going to ask you to press the bell icon because you don't really want to be uh, hearing what I got. Uh, hearing what I got to say straight away. But um, yeah, as I stumble through this, I'm going to have a drop, drink of tea, and I'm going to tell you about a new section I'm trying. It's called the Legends in Their Own Lunchtime. If you can think of a better title, please let me know. But when we were going through the HQs for Wrath and Rapture, and we were deciding on the which HQ I would take if I was building the army. It, I got it's good. It was nice to see how they all intertwine, and it was really fun for me to see how an army can build from that. So I wanted to expand on that now, as we go through different armies. And see who's going to be the best bang for their buck. So, without further ado, I'm going to start the show. And I'm going to introduce you to my favourite legend already. He's just bonkers. Bizarre. And if he was at any other HQ for any other army, he would have been called OP within two seconds of him being announced. Without further ado, we have the Loom King himself. Yeah! <laughs> right, you may be wondering why I want to start with a brand new HQ. It's because I like to look at them in a vacuum of what I think they would bring to the army. And nothing does that better than having a brand new HQ that not a lot of people have tried out yet. So, first off, he's 220 points. And for that 220 points, he has got a ton of abilities and he's a wizard, which means he's got magic. And this is Boss Grot at the end of the day. He's in charge of every other Grot in that army. So, he's got to be a nutcase to be in charge. But why is he in charge? Well, so far, if you want basic fluff, He's in charge because the moon has told him to. And for a grot, why do you need any other reason? I've left the model up on the screen because, as you can see, it's a fantastic model. He's full of trinkets. He's got his little mushroom uh, crown. He's got his staff with the moon on it. He's covered in fungus, which is amazing. He's got a little helper squig. Another nice touch. But it's not just his looks that make him a legend. Like I said before, he's got some fantastic abilities. So if you can give me a chance, we're going to go over them. And I hope you enjoy. I said it already, but comment, like, subscribe. Tell me what you think of this as a section, because we'll carry it on. Right, first off, we're going to look at his stats and his weapons. So, we know, movement 4, 5 plus save, bravery 6. Standard grot. They ain't standing around, taking punches, unless they want to be. 
but he has with six wounds. But I guess that's because you're the Loon King at the end of the day. You don't you don't get knocked out in one punch and remain a king. So take that as it is. He's got one weapon with two stats. It's the moon on a stick. Oh, the moon on a stick, depending on uh, what grot you like. So, the stick's missile attack is 28 inch range, 6 attacks, plus 3 to hit and to wound, minus 1 rend, damage 1. That's alright, it's nice and tasty. A few pot shots as you, people are coming in, all well and good. And then, it doesn't stop when they get in. Melee attack is 2 inch range. 4 attacks, still 3 plus to hit and to wound, and minus 1 to rend, and dam damage 1. So he's doing damage, and he's not going down lightly, so it's great to see. He's going to stick He's gonna stick about, take a few guys out with him. So he's the leader you want. Yeah, he's a grot at the end of the day. He's not a trogoth. But that's the stats. That you gotta, you've got to get out of the way. You've got to deal with this to enjoy the rest of it, this stuff. So, now, we're going to take some time to look at the abilities. I said we're going to have abilities and now we've got some fantastic abilities. I hope you can see this properly on the screen because as I'm editing this, it's all looking alright, but... My PC has been known to play up when it gets to the uploading uh, part. So you've got to tell me if it's playing up. Right. Abilities. The Babbling Wand. If this model is your general and is on the battlefield at the start of your hero phase, on a 4 plus you receive D3 extra commands. That's a 4 plus to attempt to get D3 extra command points just for being in the board. So potentially, if you roll very well, you get an extra 4 command points for in that hero phase. Worst you're going to get is 1. I don't know about you, but command points quite vital to to my game it might not be to you as you might be all right on the uh on the rolls but this guy guarantees you've got some in your kitty ready to be used i think that's fantastic you can't overlook that now the second ability we're going back to his uh his stick the da the mo da moon on a stick sorry i really get excited when i say that if any wounds inflicted by the moon on a stick are allocated to an enemy model and not negated, that enemy suffers one mortal wound at the end of each battle round, even if the wounds inflicted by the stick are, subsequ are subsequently healed. So that means as long as he hits you and he wounds you, you ain't shrugging off that attack. So you might... You might get it, get it back. You might heal yourself, but that's still coming off at the end. He's two hundred twenty points, and already, I think he's worth it. And that's just two abilities and his attacks. And we've got a few more things to go, so this is going to be bonkers, but. I think that's quite important because he's taking mortal wounds. That's not something you can save. So, wow, what a model. So, before I, uh, I, I go off daydreaming, let's go on to the Loon King's Crown. Add one to casting and unbinding rolls for this model. In addition, roll a dice each time a wound or mortal wound is allocated to this model on a 4 plus. A wound or mortal wound is negated. So he's got a chance of negating wounds and he's 
are in a buff to his binding and unbinding spells and you know his casting. This is why he's a legend. This this guy is going to be a legend and I am probably putting too much into him but I think he's going to be seen in nearly every list for this army and I don't blame people for doing it. I think if I was to start an army of Grot, it's exactly what I would do. I would have this guy as the mainstay and just have a lot of units coming off him. As I went over wave two, there's a, a few extras that you can put around the board. But this guy is, he is the centre of your army and you build out from him. This is just fantastic. But that's not all. We've got command abilities and we've got magic to look over. So, I'll see if I can find them now. Right, guys, I've taken a little bit of liberty with this one because I've cropped it so we can just look at the command ability for him and the magic because it's listed on his magic um, war scroll part is that he's got arcane bolt and mystic shield and i don't think you want me to go over that because we all know what they are so yes he has got magic and he has your, your basic arcane bolt and mystic shield but that's not the best one i will be coming back to that first off i'm going over his command ability which is the Loon King's Entreaty. Uh, you can use this command ability once per battle. If this model is your general and on the battlefield, before you roll a dice, determine how far the bad moon moves on the battle round. If you do so, you can choose the bad moon to either not move that battle round or make one or two moves. And you do not have to roll a dice. GW put out in the community page that they had a bad moon mechanic for these guys, which means, as I said, before you do um, your. Hang on a minute, let me find it. I think it's before your hero phase. Sorry, there was a big long pause in the middle of that. Before your hero phase. The moon is moving across the field. And they've also stated that it has different effects. It could have minus, minus one to casting for wizards. Or it has plus one to bravery for, for moon clan. So it's a, well, it's a big part of the, the gifts game. And once per game he can control where that is so if he's receiving too many hits and he's he's scared that um units are gonna run off he's he can move it to say no 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 they stay in firm or if he's gonna charge and he, he needs to make sure that he gets all his buffs for when he's attacking he can move it into that phase it's once per game, that's all you need. It is so, so simple, but yet so deadly. A good Grot player, a good Git player, I should say, can use this to full advantage and turn the tide of a game. That is fantastic. But the other part of this is he is your general, but he's a wizard as well. As I said, the crown gives... Plus one to cast in, minus one to unbind in. It, it also lets him plan, uh, do Archibald and Mystic Shield, standard. But also we got his very own magic spell, which is called Nicket, Nicket, which basically has a casting value of eight. If successful, pick one enemy model within 18 inches of the cast that is visible to them. The, the unit that model belongs to suffers D3 mortal wounds. 
in addition, if our model has an artifact of power and casting was 10 plus, the model's artifact of power can no longer be used. If it was used to enhance a weapon, that weapon reverts back to its normal form. That is massive to me. That's you. You're taking out your your, your opponent's general's buffs, or you're taking out your the wizard's enhancement. That is fantastic. That's another way that they trip you up. I was doing a Blade's Corn army, I still am, I will be putting vlogging videos up as of next week to show you that it's ongoing for the channel. But I've upgraded the Hellblade so it does more attacks. But this guy can stop it, it can just be a basic blade. You can't sniff at that. That's amazing. This this is why I want to start off the series with this guy. He is an absolute legend. And I think he's going to be everywhere. He is going to be the star of the uh, of the gets. Without shadow of a doubt. And you may have got your book already. And I may be wrong. I may be overhyping him. So please tell me in the comments below. I think this guy is bonkers. He is a legend. And I think he was the best choice to kick off the series. And I just don't know what else to say. It's just, he's fantastic. And if he wasn't a grot, I'm sure the community would have been up in arms about this guy. He's, he's, he's bonkers like a, like a grot should be. Fantastic. Absolutely amazing. And that's it, guys. That's the first episode of Legends in Their Own Lunchtime. I've said it all the way through. Comment down below what you think. Am I right to call this guy a legend? Is, is he... Better than what I'm saying? Is he worse than what I'm saying? Am I giving him too much hype? Now that's up to you to tell me. So you tell me below. The other thing is, if you've got some suggestions for future legends, stick them down below as well. We'll have a look at them. We'll put them up, up on the board. And we'll, we'll see uh, how the legends fare. But I want to take this time to say thank you again for watching this video. Please comment, like, subscribe. Don't worry about the bell icon. You don't have to listen to me straight away. You can listen to me in your own time. But it's always a pleasure to talk to you guys. Because as I always say, this is the community channel. Done by the community for the community. So... Your input is always appreciated. And now it's a part of the show which I find very hard to do every single time I do it. It does not get any easier. And that's, I don't know, that's probably just me being awkward, useless, you name it. Wife's probably told me a hundred times before. But... All that said, the channel's got a Patreon and a PayPal. Link is down below. Thank you for watching the program. As that means so much to me and for everybody that helps me out. It's really appreciated. I've got these links up, so if anybody can give more than their time we can expand the channel but just a subscription and a like means the world to us so thank you thank you for all your support so far and i hope to bring you
better content in the future, different content in the future. And I've also put a on the discussion board on the channel uh, a question of what you guys would like to see. I have said before that we'd look and do Blood Bowl matches on you. I'm still trying to get people who want their teams to be videoed for the channel. Um, that's all coming up. I will be doing vlogging videos showing that the Blades of Corn army is being built for the channel. And once that's done out the way, I will be going back to doing uh, Slanesh, but I'll also be doing my Undead army because that's gone on the back burner now because I want to take my time with it. But I want to get the Corn one up and ready for the channel because. It's the channel, channel's army, so I want to get it out there as quick as possible so you guys can enjoy it. And then when we expand to over a thousand points, it's going to be out down to you guys to tell me what should be the next unit, monster, artillery piece that goes into it. So stay tuned for future content. I've said already, thank you very much for watching the video. Thank you for your support, and I will see you in the next video. So long and get the cattle on.